Hi everyone, my name is Kevin Zhu. I'm a high school senior at Jericho High School out in New York, and my project is broadly focused on identifying two novel mutation types in cancer known as microchanging short tendon repeats and recurrent repeat contractions. In the last 50 years, global cancer morbidity and mortality rate have rapidly increased, with over 30 million annual cancer cases expected by 2040. Given that, one of the most effective predictors for cancer survival rate is the stage at which cancer is diagnosed. Now, in order to increase early cancer diagnoses, we need to be able to identify new genetic mutation markers in cancer to study, which would allow us to create early cancer diagnostic tools that we could use for early cancer detection. We know that two-thirds of all mutation types in human cancers hail from replication errors, which include chromosomal amplifications and gene duplications. A subset, tandem repeats, have recently become valuable to study. Take, for example, a CEG repeat repeating 20 times. We've already been able to study drastic increases upon this expected tandem repeat size, called a recurrent repeat expansion. However, we have yet to study the opposite, called a recurrent repeat contraction, where we see a decrease in size, or a microchanging short tandem repeat, which is a smaller variation upon an expected tandem repeat size, say, for example, plus or minus 5 or 10 repeats. This is due to the high genomic instability in cancer, which causes sequence ambiguity, meaning we don't know where in the genome to prioritize looking for these mutations in the first place. And so current tools that identify mutations in cancer, called structural variant callers, are unable to efficiently identify these mutations. However, with my lab, I was able to create two methods that would allow us to potentially identify these mutations better. First was the lab and I created something called local read normalization, which would allow us to essentially eliminate false positive reads by removing any amplified read depth um, false positives coming from things like chromosomal amplifications and other replication errors. Second, we tested the use of something called the Active STRs catalog, which contains over 170,000 locations of potential mutations to investigate. And so with these two methods, I was able to identify 182 instances of microchanging short tandem repeats and 120 instances of recurrent repeat contractions across 15 total cancer types. What was really interesting was that a large proportion of these mutations were cancer subtype specific, essentially meaning that they would only occur in one type of cancer, allowing us to determine the tissue of origin or the cancer of origin dependent on that specific mutation itself, showing the diagnostic relevance of these mutations. So after computationally identifying these mutations, I wanted to characterize the role in cancer. And so I compared them to other known types of repeats and mutations in cancer as well as outside of cancer and found that these mutations were actually distinct from other previously known types of mutations, but they had functional roles similar to those known in cancer. For example, we found that the genes that these mutations were found within have already shown precedence in literature to have functional and therapeutic roles in cancer. We also know that these mutations occur closer towards cis-regulatory or functional elements of the genome than expected by chance, meaning they could play roles in cancer cell death and progression. Lastly, I wanted to do an analysis by looking at case study microchanging short tandem repeats and recurrent repeat contractions that showed interesting qualities. I'm going to highlight one of those, which was a set of eight mutations in uh, liver hepatocellular carcinoma, or just liver cancer. Um, these microchanging short tandem repeats in the tumor populations showed a large proportion of contractions, whereas in a normal population, we saw this contraction not as often. This means that this quality could be used as a way to diagnose or detect whether a particular input sample was tumor or not. And so I looked at the length of these eight mutations across 454 liver cancer patients and ran a simple regression model and found that within these pop, with the, by using the model itself, I was able to determine whether a specific, or the model was able to determine whether a specific sample was tumor, uh, tumor cancer or uh, normal sample at a rate of nearly 98% accuracy, meaning we could use these mutations as an effective diagnostic panel for liver cancer itself. I also did an experimental analysis where I conducted Sanger DNA sequencing to validate that these mutations actually do exist in liver cancer patient tumor samples themselves. I also then conducted uh, PCR and electrophoresis by designing specific primers that would only bind when a specific mutation is found and tested that in plasma samples to see if we could find these mutations in cell-free DNA. And so the idea there is that if we can find a uh, mutation in cell-free DNA, essentially DNA that shears off of primary tumor masses and ends up in the bloodstream, we could potentially create early cancer diagnostic measures. And so the idea they're trying to walk through is if you were to walk into a clinic and get a blood draw and get that sequence at a laboratory, the algorithm could tell you the diagnostic relevance or potential that you may have cancer and prevent non unnecessary uh, invasive IOC procedures. And so I'm really excited to kind of see where the future of this technology holds both in diagnostic and therapeutic relevance. Thank you.